Joe Blasco here for MUA TV. And today's very special guest is one of my graduates, Mr. Justin Rawley. Now we're gonna be right back with Justin Rawley right after these words. Don't you go away. Hey, welcome back. Joe Blasco here with master makeup artist, Mr. Justin <laughs> Rawley. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure. You know, it's really a me. pleasure to see you. Uh, you have been incredibly busy. I mean, really busy. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm, I look at your resume here, and I don't know how you do it. I, I'm just having trouble just coming <laughs> in here and doing these little interview shows. Um, let's, let's go back. Let's go way back. Oh. Where did you grow up? Uh, originally grew up in Louisiana, and then came out to uh, California towards end of high school to mm -hmm. live with my grandmother, and spent most of my time in kind of Big Bear area before I moved oh, down Big to Bear. the Los That's Angeles great. area. Yeah. So. Terrific. What? What? Um, when did you know that you wanted to be a makeup artist for the first time? Was there some? What happened? What happened in your head? What was it that sparked that? that desire to be a makeup artist? I have to say either The Thing or The Exorcist. Which thing? Uh, the first one, actually the black and white thing was the first one. With that James just, Arness? Yeah, which just scared the living crap Daylight, out of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, you know, later with the Robotine and John right. Carpenter version was the one that just kind of blew my mind and right. really sealed the deal on right. making me try to figure out what a makeup artist really did. Right, right. So, that's and, uh, amazing. That's great. That's great. And 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 uh, you graduated from the Hollywood Joe Blasco Makeup Artist Training Center. What year, Justin? Ninety seven. Ninety six. Ninety six. And since ninety six, listen to this. Listen to these titles. You've got I Am Legend. Okay. You got Click. You've got Alpha Dog. You've got Jarhead. You've got Alien versus Predator. <laughs> Amazing. Spider-Man 2, Hellbent, Scooby-Doo 2, Big Fish, you know, uh, Sp uh, Spider-Man, The Time Machine, come on, my God, uh, Ali, um, Jurassic Park 3, Artificial Intelligence, Castaway, Bedazzled, Hollow Man, Nutty Professor 2, and it just goes on and on and on here. <laughs> I, this is, um, this is... Congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, you have had a really incredibly power-packed career in a very short period of time. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I am kind of have to slap myself sometimes. It's been, <laughs> it's been a real just kind of luxury. I mean, I really just yeah. kind of lucked out and met the right people and, right. and really had people like yourself and other makeup artists that, have, that I've surrounded myself with that yes. have really nurtured me and yes. really helped me with my career to move along. Yes, which, yes. Um, the uh, outside of the, what we did here in the school and myself, well, who would you say, uh, outside of my little mm -hmm. area, w would you say influenced you the most? Um, as as a mentor or just someone that? Uh, Both. Both. Okay, I would say you know Dick Smith and Rick Baker uh, have been, and Robo Team were probably two yes. of the or the three largest influences yes, outside yes. that I was always inspired by and, and just kind of right. baffled by what they could do right. work-wise. They're amazing. Yeah. They're just amazing. I, uh, I, I, I would like to see more from Rob Bottin. Yeah, you me know? too. Yeah, I really a would. Genius. I just, uh, where is Rob? Rob, as far as I know, has sort of taken a, a long-term indefinite retirement, I think. Really? I think he stepped away from the industry. What a shame. What yeah, a shame for it's us. It's really sad. I mean, he really exploded at such a young age. I mean, he was yeah. 19 and doing like the Halloween and the right. Howling and then moved right, into the right. thing by 20. I mean, just a phenomenal artist. Yeah. Just... I wonder if he'd come and visit us. Maybe I should give him a call. You should. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Hey, um, I mean, you do all phases of makeup. Yep. You, you don't just do prosthetics, although no. you specialize, you, you do, you specialize in uh, prosthetics. Yeah. And um, what well, obviously we know what drew you to prosthetics, you know, with these people as your mentors, you know. Right. Um, 
what m most people out there may not know, and this goes out all over the world. This isn't just a national type show, but you're, there are makeup artists in every country of the world that are watching this um, who are not familiar, perhaps, with your lab. Right. And you own, what is the name of the lab that you own? Uh, I own a company called Quantum Creation FX. Um, and uh, we established uh, about three and a half years ago. So we sort of, uh, Steve Johnson, a makeup artist that I'm sure people know the oh, name yeah. of. And oh, yeah. Have, There's uh, another guy we got to get on the show. <laughs> Steve Johnson ended up sort of closing his studio down and uh, decided he wanted to become a writer and wanted to stay, uh, step away from the industry. And at that time, my business partner and I were um, Christian Beckman, who's my partner. We were both lead artists and supervisors for Steve Johnson. And when Steve decided he wanted to close the doors, we decided to step up and ask if you moved in. We could take over the space and sort of walk right in. And we didn't want to ride the coattails with Steve, so we didn't right. keep the name Edge Effects or right keep the attachment with Steve Johnson. We created our own name. Right. It took a good solid year to try and get our name back out there and, and get out of the shadow of Steve Johnson, which right. we finally have done. That's a big shadow to get out <laughs> It was. I mean, talented, very uh, It's more like sunlight. Artist. It's not really a shadow. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, yeah, I, someone told me that there's an area out there where your lab is, that mm -hmm. it's like a, you know, a little industrial park of some sort, and there are several labs there in that same area. Is yeah, that... I mean, within 10 minutes from my studio. It's like safety in numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of. It's, for some reason, we all sort of, it's like magnetism. We're right. all sort of drawn into right. this little Do you go circle. next door and knock on the door and ask for, like, to borrow, like, a, a cup of UltraCal? Or... We don't really knock <laughs> on the door, but sometimes, uh, yeah, do you have some silicone we ran out? <laughs> right, sure, right. And we'll borrow it. Uh, actually, I mean, like, spectrum motion is about two minutes from us. Uh, Rick Baker's studio is close to us. Greg Canham's studio is close to us. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Totopoulos, before he closed his oh, studio, yeah. is very yeah. close. I mean, within a 10-mile radius, there's probably six different effects wow. objects in that area. Wow. Which, and there's always stiff competition between all of us. In oh, some yeah. Sense, so. That's great. That's great. Do you, do you strive, do you strive to win awards? Uh... At this point, I'm not really thinking about it. I'm really just trying to put our best foot forward and, and take each project and really look at it as a whole and try and do the best work we can. Right. And uh, the thought of an award, of course, it would be nice and be wonderful to try and, or to, to be nominated for something. But right. at this point, really the concern is just to do right. good build work. Build the lab, do great Build the work. lab, do and the best known. work we can. Be known, mm -hmm. uh, which we're a, a, growing, a growing studio. Yeah. Uh, you've got several pictures here, uh, Justin, in, in post-production, and uh, these are uh, they're, these are pretty good-sized pictures. There's one for 10 million, one for 20.5 million. These are the budgets, and here's one for 100 million. Um, this one is uh, well. Let's start here uh, at the bottom of the list here. Cabin Fever. Tell us about Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever Two uh, is sequel to the first Cabin mm -hmm. Fever. Uh, which is just an extreme gore fest. Actually, it was a project that we did the second year of opening, and it still hasn't come out. I'm, I'm not sure if it's being tied up in post-production still right. or what the issues are. But uh, it's it's a fun, just back to 1980s roots gore fest kind of movie. Right, right, I right. think. Uh, do you like doing the, the gore? What do you prefer? Do you prefer doing the gory makeup? No. Like the Safini kind of stuff, or, or the st early stuff that I did, like Ilsa Shiva for the SS. Or, or more sophisticated for character me, makeup. For me, character makeup is, is what I love, and that's my passion, and, and uh, that's what I'm drawn to. Right. Uh, blood and gore, I mean, there's elements of the art, the research behind some of the things, if we have a really sophisticated gag, the right. actual technicality right. of it, I enjoy that side right. of it, but when it comes to getting covered in blood and right, being right, a mess at all right. times, no, that's, right, that's right. not my Zombies, thing. Zombies. Um, I have a lot of people in my studio that they love it and they're phenomenal at it, and I usually put them in charge on set, and right. I'll just come in and check it out and supervise. And okay, what is, the, what is the most sophisticated uh, of, and realistic of all of the makeups? What's the makeup that you're most proud of? Um, that people could see, I would say, for Ali, we for did a... Uh, Howard Cosell on John Voight. Right. And, uh, wow, that was great. Before that, I worked on Pearl Harbor with Stan Winston Studios, yes. and I was a key artist for right. the Franklin Delano Roosevelt makeup on him. Yes. All he came around, they went back to Stan's, and Stan was a little too busy, so we ended up going to myself and uh, another artist by the name of Nick Mara to create the makeup. So right. it, was, it was a great adventure to, to take a 
prominent character from history and right. really work out and do test makeups and right, try and figure right. out. It's the more best difficult, way to it. isn't it? Isn't it's, it more it's a lot more difficult because yeah. everyone, it's like an aging makeup. Everyone has right. seen an old person. Right. right. So, you know, a creature you can get away with anything, but you put something that's supposed to look real that everyone has seen right. in reference and it's burned and ingrained into their mind, right. they're going to see what is false and what, what is real. What a challenge. That's a, yeah. a great challenge. Um, <clears throat> uh, what, are there any moments, like working on Ali, that you can remember that really stand out in your mind that you were very proud of? Uh, I think really the first time we saw John in makeup. Uh, I mean, he's he's a phenomenal actor and and he just took over the character and even the the first test makeup there was you know some glitches and things we right. wanted to change but once you put it all together and he took on the persona it's just right it's, it's amazing it's, it's mind blowing because right. it's it's really that symbiotic relationship between the makeup artist and the actor if the actor doesn't know how to work through makeup and doesn't know how to take That's on right. the character then the makeup is going to ultimately fail at that point right do you uh, do you work mainly in foam latex not anymore uh, primarily everything we do across the board is gel foot silicone All right um, you did a great great makeup for us in volume what is it volume two no it's, it's volume two or three, three. Yeah. It's volume three, which are being printed at the end of this year and are going to be available. We're trying, we're trying desperately to get these books out, volume two and three. Right. Desperately. Nobody knows what it takes to print books like this. <laughs> I mean, there, there are no makeup books like this ever done. I mean, these are, these are encyclopedias That's of makeup. Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, well, makeup. volume one was like, it, 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 there was a joke in Hollywood. Everybody was talking, everybody was spreading the rumor that I had had a baby that weighed 11 pounds, 8 <laughs> ounces, right? And uh, as it turned out, they were talking about the book, volume one, you know, right. uh, of the professional makeup artist that Vin and I wrote. And uh, uh, the book weighed. 11.8 ounces, uh, but now we have volume two, which is all character makeup, and volume right. three, which you are in, which is right. all laboratory procedures. Right. And Justin did this remarkable uh, makeup for us, and it's step by step by step. I mean, it gives you the formulas, I and mean, he shows you how to how to how to do it, everything from step one all the way through to to the end, to the application, uh, right up to walking the actor right onto camera. You did a beautiful job, thank and you. I want to thank you for doing that. And uh, perhaps we might uh, we might get you to come in someday for MUA TV and to and to and to do something for us. I would love air. to uh, to to sit down and go through silicone. I mean, yep. really, we spend a huge amount of time at our studio researching the most advanced techniques and try and try and build upon the techniques that are available to us. We right. try and innovate as much as right. possible, and we always try and look outside the box. As this much is as what possible. I love about about the young people, young makeup artists, because I was there once. I was there once many years ago, <laughs> and I was constantly, I mean, I was constantly experimenting, will this work, will that work, you know, you know, putting egg whites into the latex, you know, I mean, as part of the foaming process, Trying I mean, we did cream. everything, <laughs> you know, it was crazy, shampoo, shaving cream, right. you name it, and, uh, and for foaming, uh, but that's, that's, that's what it's all about, that, uh, people like you. Uh, you know, are the, are those who are responsible for advancing the art? Like you and Rick Baker, obviously, right. you know, falls into that category. Yeah, I mean, we really feel that there's there's a just a long lineage and and behind us that yes. we need to try and right. not step backwards, but keep pushing forward. Uh, exactly. And, and exactly. without that, it's just going to become stagnant. So many things in the industry are changing on a, on a constant yeah. basis with yes. advance in computer generation and, and uh, the technology that's available to us. I mean, everything in our studio is changing and trying to evolve with that. And to the point where most of our conceptual design is now completely 3D. So we can do a full three-dimensional concept design opposed to a Photoshop okay. illustration or Okay, something. for everybody out there all over the world, Okay? Walk us through it. The actor walks into your shop for the first time. You're meeting them for the first time. You're going to do an aging. Right. All in silicone. Walk everyone out. Let, have everyone understand how, how unique what you do. Process. How complicated the process actually is. How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have all day. Go ahead. Uh, typically what we'll do is, uh, before we even meet with the actor, um, we'll get photos of the actor and try and sit down and come up with a conceptual design right. that we can get our approval from the director and producers and from the actor as well yes. um, and figure out the progression of that makeup for that actor. Um, now a lot of the times we'll skip the old style of doing a, uh, an alginate or yeah. silicone life cast 
and we'll actually do cyber scans on people, which mm -hmm. is a full digital 3D scan. We'll mm -hmm. take them into a booth. It takes a perfect high resolution image in three dimension of that person to scale. Amazing. And we can skip out having them sit there, especially when it comes to body casting and things yes. like that. We skip having them go through the weight yes. of plaster bandages. Now, do you that. have this machine at your lab? Uh, or is there a, a place where every, everyone goes yeah, because the machine is so incredibly expensive? One I'm of sure. these high-res ma machines is about, I don't know, about a million dollars for one wow. machine. Wow, I was going to say a few, th hundred, th hundred, <laughs> a few hundred thousand. I'm no, a full, a full body scanner is about a million. So. Um, so there, there are a couple places in Los Angeles that, that do this type of work, and they can do rapid prototyping and do yes. outputs. The outputs usually come out in like a wax, uh, or it can come out in like a rigid polyurethane mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. So body forms, we usually do rigid poly, polyurethane. Head forms we'll do in wax. Mm -hmm. And we still do traditional life casting as well, because sometimes the detail isn't there and you need very specific details. Right. Uh, once we have design set, we have our impressions. We'll do molds of the actor, make final master molds and from there begin sculpting. Um, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I'm really glad to be documenting this <laughs> because one day you are going to look back at this 20, 30, 40 years from now and you're going to go, whoa, no wonder I got to where I am today. <laughs> I was really driven. You know, it's so great to sit here you know, and to look into the eyes of these makeup artists and to see the passion that they have. This is what it takes. And I'm really, I'm so happy that you're one of my graduates. Thank I gotta you. tell you that. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I, you know, I know that we played a very little part in, in really, you know, educate, well, we educated you in a very basic fashion, let's say, but you know, you, you, you had what it took from the very beginning. It's obvious, you know, and you've gone out and you've worked with, with the, the, uh, the masters of special makeup effects, Stan Winston, Rick Baker, and the others, and you've learned so much, and it really shows. One it of the, really uh, shows. So, get, I'm sorry, I just had to throw that in. <laughs> go ahead, get, get, go, go. On go. that note, one of the best comments that, that you ever gave me when I was a student here and when I was an assistant instructor for you right. was, uh, be a sponge. Right. You said be a sponge. No matter what it is, no matter who you meet, you can always learn from someone. And I've just followed that advice. Even if it's to the wrong team. way. No, it's true. Know? I mean, you, you need to learn the mistakes and learn from somebody else's that's right. mistakes. That's and right. hopefully you can see through that and you don't have to struggle in that way. Or you learn something that's just mind-blowing and you have to sort of mentally figure out what that is. Right. Let's get back to the process. Okay. So process-wise, after uh, we get into sculpture, um, we'll complete the entire sculpture in clay, and then that clay sculpture is then broken down into individual separate little pieces with yes. separate little molds. Wow. Depending on how many overlaps there is, how many molds there is, because you know, an average makeup Now the molds, is, the positives are made by the machine. Uh, not when it gets to that process. When we do the actual initial output of a head, yes. it's made by a machine. I see. And then we clean it up and make yes. a master silicone mold. You refine it. it, excellent. When we actually do the sculpture, then it's, uh, it's usually done by hand. Outside of that, for non-makeup, when we're getting into creature suits and things like that, we are actually doing it where the machine will do the output for us. Or if we have to do a highly detailed mechanical kind of sculpture, yes. now we're having the machine do the, the outputs for us. Because now in the computer, we can digitally design the entire sculpture in yes. 3D, Yes. Um, scale it over a person's digital cyber scan, and then have the machine output the two images in, in rigid foam or wax or whatever wow. you prefer, and the two can key together. We've designed a process where the body in digital space and the sculpture in digital space can key together as if we sculpted in a real clay. That's amazing. So the process is really changing on right. how things are done, especially mechanical kind of things. Yes. Um, so uh, the, the final process ends up becoming the same once is either it's output or it's sculpted. Um, it's broken down into the separate little pieces. Everything is molded. Most of our molds are aerospace quality molds. They're all made out of materials like epoxies and composites and graphites and Nomex and I mean, there's yeah. crazy just state of the art. It's and all just state of the art. And it depends on the project. Sometimes we go back to the right. basics, depending on budget right. for the show. Of course, right. you know, and you have to judge. Well, when you have a one hundred million dollar budget, I mean, the film—that's the budget of the film. Right. So let's say, what's the budget of makeup on a film that's one hundred million dollars overall? It can vary. I mean, um, Watchmen was a, a very large project for us, and very short amount of time. We had five full prosthetic suits that we had to manufacture right. for characters, and they're all highly detailed, right. precision, 
like cars, basically putting a car on side someone's on someone's body that yeah. has to move. Um, something like that, you can. It could be a couple million to several million. You know, to be vague. <laughs> right, to be vague. We don't want the IRS coming after us. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> please, I don't want, please. I don't want my competition to know what we bid on things. So. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, so, we won't go in that direction then. So go ahead. So now, material-wise, once we uh, once we get into casting materials after we've made molds and right. and uh, move further in the process. Like I said, most of the thing, most of the time, it's silicone. If it's a prosthetic makeup, it's going to be silicone. Yes. Unless uh, we're work, working with a different makeup artist, I'm not applying it myself, and they prefer foam latex or yes. gelatin or something like that. Yes. Obviously, we accommodate that. Um, now, tell tell us about the different types of gelatin. Gelatin? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Of silicone. Silicone. Uh, there's two major differences between the silicones that we use, right. besides just cure types. Right. Now pay attention to this, and I'm always telling you know to have a, a notepad and a pencil. Write this down. This is invaluable information. Go ahead. Um, and it's about it's not gelatin. It's silicone. Correct? Right. Correct. Um, basic, simple, down to the roots of what silicone is is you know it's basically uh, it's glass. I mean that has been fumed and melted down with chemicals and. It has been constructed in a way that you can catalyze it and it'll cure and become flexible glass. That's yes. basically what it is in yeah. essence. So there's two different cure types that we'll do and curing is just, it refers to how the process um, of catalyzation happens within the Explain material. catalyzation. Uh, it, it's in an essence taking all of the, the main components, the silicone base, all the binders, adding a reactive component that goes into it and it causes all the little molecules to come together and then fuse. Right. It's kind of, a, kind of a, a solidifying process. Yeah, it solidifies everything. Okay. So you have what's called addition cure and then condensation cure. Addition cure is also commonly known as platinum, and that is reactive in any type of environment, even in a vacuum. There's nothing on the outside that can affect it. Once you add the catalyst to it, it will cure no matter what, unless there's an inhibitor of some sort. There's yes. certain things that it's sensitive to and it will yes. cure next to it. Condensation cure is directly affected by the moisture, ambient moisture in the air. Yes. So it needs moisture to actually cure. So well, if does. you drop the temperature too low, there's no humidity, it'll take much longer, longer to cure. I mean, there's always going to be some somewhat, right. some type of moisture in the air, yes. so it will cure. It'll just take much, yes. much longer. Um, so you have your basic elastomer, which we'll use, it, it can be in various different densities from you know very hard, stiff, to something super soft and fleshy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the elastomer itself we'll use for doing body parts or fake heads or mm -hmm. display pieces or, or things mm -hmm. like that. Then we have gel-filled technology, which probably- this is, uh, this is used more often than not, right, for, gel for aging yeah, appliances? It, most people, like you know Rick Baker's Studios Innovation and- uh, Great Canon. Great Canon. Yes. Uh, you, pretty much everyone is trying to push into that direction, and some mm -hmm. people have had more experience with, right. with it than others. Um, the basic technology, it comes from breast plants. I mean, yes. that's basically what yeah, it is. Breast it's implants, an, it's exactly. A, the implant, it's basically an encapsulated shell with gel inside. Mm -hmm. So it's the same process of creating an encapsulant, creating a shell, but the shell is created from the negative and positive mold. Yes. So negative of the sculpture, positive of the person's face, both sides are encapsulated with material, closed, and then inside Injected. you inject a gel. Mm -hmm. And the difference with a gel to an elastomer is the gel is just so soft yes. and so fragile yes. that without the encapsulant, it'll never really yeah, retain it shape. It'll shape. rip. Right. Has Does it hold the thing. shape of the, say you, you, you uh, I would imagine it would depend on the thickness of the gel right. it would t to hold the detail of the surface wrinkling. That can be some, some problems. If yeah. you overly plasticize it, yes. then it's going to sag. Yes. It will not have enough memory yes. to re retain the shape. Yes. So there's a fine line between how soft do you make it, yes. how dense do you make it. Because yes. if it's too dense, then it's not going to move yeah. very well, but it's much easier to right. apply. And also, I would imagine that the material that you use to encapsulate it mm -hmm. has to be very carefully formulated also. Of course, because whatever it's encapsulated with, um, if you look at you know the back of your hand and you move right. your hand, right. the little soft wrinkles that you get, yes. that's what the encapsulant does to the gel. Yes. So if you put a lot of encapsulant on, now you've got elephant skin wrinkling around. Yes. If yes. you put too little on, then it's too fragile and it'll rip yes. and break. Yes. So there's a fine line and through R&D, you sort of discover what you like, what you don't yes. like, what works um, in basic function. 
and then you kind of find the fine lines. Of now, the, the, details. The, the formula for the encapsulant, is this somewhat of a secret from lab to lab, or is Everyone, only in certain labs? Certain labs. <laughs> I mean, um, really the base that everyone has sort of made as a... It's a vinyl, isn't it? It's so, a vinyl. Yeah, no matter like, what, like it's a vinyl. Like VYNS, XYSG. You know, uh, most people, if they want to go out and buy something that's good, uh, you can buy something called New Baldies. Yes, exactly. Uh, Baldies is just bald cap vinyl. Yes. It's diluted with acetone. You can airbrush it in. Yes. You can plasticize it. You can do a lot of different things to ch tweak the formula to yes. your liking. Yes. But that's sort of an industry standard. Right. Everyone's using it, even if they say they, they're not. Or they've formulated something platinum based, or they've added something else into it right. a different type of binder, a different type of plasticizer, so on and so on. Right. Um, but, most people will admit to what it is. And the, the main silicone that everyone has fallen in love with is a, a material from uh, uh, Polytech called uh, Platsil Gel 10. Platsil. 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 P L A T dash S I L. S I L. Platsil Gel 10. 10. And uh, it can be used for life casting, it can be used for as an elastomer yeah. by itself, or you can deaden the material. There's something called deadener, which is a plasticizer, yes. that you can convert it into a gel. And you can, it sets rapidly. Right. There's also a, a retarder for it, so it can slow it down. Yes. There's a thixotropic agent, so you can yes. thicken it. Right. it. It's a really beautiful universal material that, yes. that everyone has just fallen in love with yes. throughout the entire yes. industry. Oh, so. I can't wait to come visit your lab. Please, I would love yeah. to have you in. Yeah, yeah, it's you can, amazing. You can touch and get a tactile yeah. sense of all these things. So. <laughs> Terrific, okay, uh, continue with the process. So uh, once we decide on what the material is, cast it, uh, typically we're moving to makeup testing at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, after it's been, you've right. done seam work, you've intrinsic done Intrinsic coloring as opposed to extrinsic coloring. Oh, sure. Uh, that can go with gelatin, with foam latex, mm -hmm. with, with silicone. Do you use, uh, what type of materials do you use for intrinsic coloring? Are they, uh, are they basic pigments, uh, cosmetic FD&C type pigments? Primarily or? everything. Are they dyes? Right. Liquids, powders? It, I mean, it depends. With foam latex, usually it's cosmetic pigment. Not with foam latex, with silicone. With silicone, I'm sorry. With, uh, with silicone, it's pretty much all cosmetic pigment that has been emulsified into some yes. type of, of transient fluid. Yes. Like, uh, it's either a silicone fluid yes. or it's a silicone itself. Yes. It's actually a dimethyl polysiloxin yes. that it's mixed into. And then you add that and as, then that's as a added colorant. Into it. So you can use that as a base tone and yes. then to give it uh, an organic kind of texture, we use flocking. Flocking. So it's nylon mm -hmm. flocking. Now, do you put the flocking in uh, on the underside of the uh, the encapsulation of the encapsulant. We we'll usually do, do it intrinsically. You do it right it's, in, right into the, the silicone. It's into the silicone itself. I see. A lot of times. You so know, when you're injecting have, it, the, it's in that silicone yeah, already. Injecting it or compressing, it, like squishing yes. it as yes. you would with yes. foam. Yes. Um, the only thing that you have to be careful with is because the 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 actual thickness of the silicone can vary yes. from silicone to silicone. Yes. If it's too watery, yes. the flocking will migrate to the edges and ah. get horrible looking edges yes, that have yes. just... They'll be sticking out of the edges yeah. as well. Uh, some people will go in and kind of model in with their hands, yes. actually model in flocking, yes. and then inject intrinsically colored What colors silicone. of flocking do you normally use? Usually uh, mostly primary tones. So we'll use reds, yellows, blues, mm -hmm. then we'll throw in some greens, or mm -hmm. we'll throw in some browns, right. uh, or we'll throw in some long kind of uh, maroon tones to give capillaries. Things yes. like that usually we'll try in place. So we have very specific controlled right. points where we'll put But you're trying like to that. still maintain a very translucent quality to the uh, to the gelatin, or to the uh, silicone. I would say on a scale from one to 10, yes. if you had one being- The most translucent? Completely clear. Yes. To 10 being totally opaque. Yes. No light will pass through it. I'd say skin's really like a eight and a half, nine. Really? So, I mean, if you look at your yeah, ears, which is incredibly absolutely. thin, really not that much light passes right, through right, it, unless right. you put light directly behind it, and then right. you get light passing through But you get a certain degree of uh, transparency from the encapsulant as well. It's pretty much clear. The encapsulant uh -huh. is pretty much totally so you, clear. you can see through that. You get a little, right. uh, almost magnification to a certain degree. Yes. It'll, it'll intensify the what's, flocking what's and intensify within it? the color. I see. And now for extrinsic coloring, well, what do you find yourself using? What sticks to the uh, silicone? To the silicone? Yes. If we're doing something that's uh, an elastomer by itself with no encapsulant yeah. on it, then yes. it's all painted with silicone caulking paints. So we use uh, like a acetoxy. Silicone caulking paints? Mm-hmm that you buy in a hardware store? Just clear silicone caulking. 
take that, dilute it down with mineral spirits, which if you're doing any of that, make sure wear a respirator yes. uh, in a well-ventilated area. All yeah. these, I mean, all these materials, you really need to understand material safety data and go through Absolutely, everything with yeah. any of these things. Yeah, we teach that. And it, in my studio, we're very strict on all of those things. Yeah. It's, it's you'll be, toxic you'll be very industry, pleased. So. In about 20 years, you'll yeah. be very pleased that I'm you sure did. i sure my liver and everything else will. And watch out for the airbrushing. We're going to talk about airbrushing. Of course. Too. So typically what we do is we get ox uh, acetoxy or oxamine, which is just cure types. One smells like vinegar, one is sort of neutral smelling. Yes. Um, and dilute that down with mineral spirits or dilimonene or, or any type of uh, uh, distilled uh, petroleum, petroleum distillates. Yes, yes. Um, and then you can use uh, oil paints, just standard oil paint. Yes. Or even artist, make artist oil paint. Artist oil paint. Yes. And that's probably the cheapest uh, and and probably the strongest material that you can use to paint directly onto silicone. That's amazing. They're going to be broken down and diluted and airbrushed on, or you can hand paint it, mm -hmm. seal it with the same material. It's pretty much bulletproof. Um, some people use the same silicone that they've cast the material out of. Yes. They'll use that same silicone. In. As, a, as the coloring media right. vehicle. Right. They'll, yes. they'll actually take that catalyze it, yes. dilute it down, yes. and then spray that on. So Now, do you, when you do your extrinsic coloring, do you find yourself stippling with a sponge occasionally, or do you do it's everything with an airbrush? Pretty much all airbrush. Mm -hmm. um, and I have several different airbrushes that I'll paint with. I usually, like my compressor has a Let's quick, talk about the brands. Okay. What brands do you use? Pretty much all uh, Iwata. It's pretty much Iwata. the only brand that I use. Uh, and, and there are several different types of, yeah. of airbrush. I mean, I'll have a fine line. I'll have something that I've set up that works specifically for a certain type of spatter. Yes. I'll have something that's more of a broad um, spray pattern. Yes. I'll have body painting airbrushes. And yes. pretty much my whole my whole setup is Iwata. Yes. You know? Even down to the compressor, it's all Iwata. They've just been a workhorse and bulletproof yeah. airbrushes. We're using Iwata here in, in they're, school. They're just great machines. Yeah. And, yeah. and Pretty much every airbrush you buy is sort of a knockoff of Iwata anymore, yeah. it seems like. So, right. it, uh, so you, go, you go to the original, go to the best. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not promoting me or anything. So, <laughs> uh, When you get into painting... You're uh, promoting them. I'm promoting them, so they should That's send me great. a free airbrush. <laughs> That's great. Uh, when you, you get to encapsulate materials, then it's all tattoo ink. So. Ah, oh, tattoo inks. Mm -hmm. ah, talk about that. Uh, with the encapsulants that we're using now, there's not a lot of leach, and the silicone doesn't leach out as much fluid. Yes. You can really get away with using just a standard tattoo ink, cosmetic ink dispersed in a plastic mm -hmm. with alcohol vehicle. Right. Um, as, as extrinsic. As extrinsic paint. Yes. yes. Um, also, we've done some things by... Whose brand do you of, use? I prim any? primarily use Skin Illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, I've just, and that's from Premier Products. Premier Products, yes. yes. Um, I've been using their products for years, and mm -hmm. I find that their colors are... Yeah. A little more refined sometimes, uh, if it, but then I have some of uh, Fred Blau's products, I have Real Creations products, and there I have some Temp2 products. Right. I have some of Matthew Mungle's products in my kit yes. as well. He yes. has a very beautiful beard uh, stipple color yes, that I it's use. It's kind of a greenish blue. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And uh, so gray. I kind of pick and choose, but they're all somewhat similar to each right. other. Right. Um, Matthew sent me a box, a huge box of all these colors, and I, I had to, it was like Christmas, you know, I was yeah. going for all these. And then Fred came over, and uh, Fred Blau came over, and, and and uh, did a fantastic interview, and we're running several uh, demos that Fred did right here, the older demos, mm, you know, uh, which techniques, you know, still hold up today. Of course, um, yeah. And um, uh, we have a call in to Scott and Eric from Premier Products uh, to come by and to, and to excellent. talk to us as well. Uh, I don't think we're, we're going to be able to meet with them this trip, uh, but in about six weeks when I come back to Hollywood, we'll be meeting with them. So, uh, uh, so continue. What, uh, sa well, what safety measures are you taking when you're, when you're working with an airbrush? Airbrush, I mean, it depends on what we're actually spraying out of it. Um, if it's something that's caulking based and, and petroleum distillate based, mm -hmm. then a full respirator, uh, some type of spray booth or a, mm -hmm. a way to ventilate, either it's mm -hmm. fans, box fans with mm -hmm. filtration, or an actual painter's booth. Mm -hmm. What about when you're working with uh, these uh, like stay colors and Fred's uh, real with colors? With the tattoo inks, uh, Skin we illustrator. actually use, um, there's quite a bit of alcohol on it, so mm -hmm. the alcohol will linger a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time, I will set up a box fan in the trailer with a filter. Just mm -hmm. go to Home Depot and put a filter on the back of it and put it windows right. behind my actor. Right. So it just draws right past. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's actually a um, little kind of nostril. Uh, 
I use cotton. Cotton? I just put little pieces of cotton in their nose. There's and I put them in my nose, too. Yeah. Uh, and it works if it's, beautifully. If we're making a big cloud, usually I'm doing a fine spatter. Right. I'm doing very small details, so it's not really atomizing that right. much. Right, right. But if you're really spraying something on, right. then yeah, you it's really everywhere. need to make sure that you have good proper ventilation. Right. You need to protect yourself with a mask. And what I give my actors is actually these little nasal filters that you can get for, right. like if you've ever been to the, the spray tan booth, yes. they'll give you these yes. little nostril cups that you can yes, stick in you there. Can see. <laughs> And uh, those work great. They're a little kind of weird, you know, having an actor shove something up their nose. Right, right. But they can wear that the whole time, and it doesn't really get in the way. It of looks the better than putting cotton. Cotton, <laughs> or also, um, you know, the cotton can sometimes stick. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't stick. Also, a dust mask, dust mask, dust mask. is just too yeah. large and yeah, uh, is, too cumbersome. Yeah. They're constantly doing. They don't want it. They don't want that on. You have them hold their breath and they hyperventilate right. and pass out. <laughs> you, so, uh, so that's that's been one of the uh, the best little items that I've found to kind of help with some of that. Anytime I get in the ears, I use cotton balls or something like that for yes, the ear to make yes. sure that I'm not spraying directly into the ear canal. Yes. So. Do you prefer? Let's jump. Uh, bald caps. Yeah. Do you prefer using vinyl, plastic, or rubber? Vinyl, plastic, or rubber. Hmm. Depends on what I'm doing. I guess if I'm life casting, I typically yes. use a vinyl or plastic cap. Right. Why? Um, Why because, not the rubber? Aren't they less expensive? Because we do a lot of silicone life casting, uh -huh. and uh, the rubber, the, the latex, will inhibit the silicone because most compatible. of the silicones are right. platinum. Right. Um, if I'm actually doing a bald cap, I actually prefer rubber. I, I feel plastics over time with heat and perspiration will start to sag a bit, right. and you really have to pre-stretch them. Right, right. right. And they, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you don't get enough stretch out of them, and they end up sort of dying That's out normally the case. Or they slide, they slide up. But the thing that I do love about them is that they're just much easier to paint. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they take color You can put anything, color yeah, on them. Easily. Yeah. I mean, you can put anything on there. You can put regular mineral-based product on top of it, and right. it's not going to affect it. Do you work with gelatin at all? We do. Um, it depends on what it is. We used to use a lot of gelatin, mm -hmm. um, but uh, since we've been using so much silicone, we've really found that we don't have issues with edges or, yes. or, or anything with silicone anymore. Speaking of edges, yeah. with silicone, mm -hmm. how, do you, how, do you, how do you get the, the thinnest, most unbelievably thin edge possible? It's really um, the first most important part is just having one, a good sculpture mm -hmm. that the edge is feathered off and mm -hmm. then clean properly right. on the positive. And then the molds just have to be incredibly well designed. If the positive and negative are poorly designed and poorly manufactured, the edges are going to be horrible. Right. It's just no matter what. You're what about the pressure? Pressure, absolutely. You need something, you need a mold that's strong enough to withstand quite a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, also, the amount of encapsulant you put down is yes. a huge factor yes. on what your edge will become. Yeah, absolutely. You really don't you don't need that much. Yes. I mean, you just need enough to seal. Right. Um, How many coats of the encapsulant? Usually, we do uh, really one layer on the edge, two layers on the on the actual prosthetic itself. Yes. Within the negative, and then. Um, one layer on the edge, and yes. then three layers on the back side on the actual yes. what's touching the person's skin. Um, so really, you only have two layers on your edge, and you end up getting this feathery edge that would, it's, it's thin, if not thinner, than a foam latex appliance. Right, right, right. What and that edge can be broken down with uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. isopropyl 99, or uh, if you have to, a tiny bit of acetone, mm -hmm. or you can add a little bit of uh, acetone to, to your alcohol, the alcohol right. and it just disappears, it's completely. Um, gone yes um you know i hope you know i really hope that you people out there are really writing this down because this is just incredible information um you know we're going to stop just for one second sure. okay and uh don't you go away there's a lot more to come Welcome back, Joe Blasco here on MUA TV, and we're here with master makeup artist, Mr. Justin Raleigh. Adhesives for silicone. What do you attach this silicone with? What do you find to be the best adhesive? I, uh, I pretty much only use silicone-based adhesives. Mm -hmm. um, I have had decent success with some um, 
acrylic or latex based adhesive yes. like like Prosade yes. or Beta Bond Plus. Beta Bond Plus is much tackier than regular Beta Bond, which is a premier product yes. material. Um, is it Prosade or is it Prosade? I would you know, say Prosade as prosthetic adhesive right. as opposed to Prosade. Yeah, yeah, yeah I exactly. Know. I think it's Prosade. It's well, it prosade. came from Prosade. We're going to ask Dick Smith. Dick Smith will know. <laughs> I would say right. it's probably from prosthetic adhesive A I and B. I think so, exactly. Because right? yeah. you had silicone base and then you had right. acrylic base. Right, right. So you're using uh, the uh, silicone base yeah. adhesives. Are these the Telesis adhes adhesives? Yeah, primarily Telesis. Yeah. Uh, great success with them. They're very close to what 355 used to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can control the evaporation with them. Yes. They're easy to clean up. Yes. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Does it stay on the, the entire day and not lift? And uh, can you get it off at the end of the day? Yes. So, and I've had great success with both. Do you coat the entire underside of the piece? Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll and the skin. Yeah. Sometimes I'll pre-paint the entire appliance, let it completely dry, mm -hmm. except for the edges, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, usually, I will paint the entire area mm -hmm. on the actor, powder it, let it evaporate, yes. then powder it. You powder the underside of the, the appliance as well? Yeah, both sides. Okay. And then you can reactivate Very with um, thinner. Yes. And just it wipes the powder away contact, you know, let the uh, So you've got to be sure that. that it's in the right spot before you wipe that powder Absolutely. Away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's another thing, too. If you're not sure of it, um, you can rip the encapsulate. If you lift it up. Right, right. When it's very delicate. Yeah, you can yeah. tear it apart. Um, if we're not doing it that way, sometimes I'll just do one section at a time. Yes. But I prefer to do large areas because it's just so much faster to yes. actually get the piece down. And I do the same thing with foam latex or, yes. or gelatin. I pretty much coat the entire area. Yes. Uh, I think that you prefer working with silicone more than any of the others. Am I correct? I do now. Um, yeah. I, I started with uh, Prosade. And that was my favorite adhesive forever yeah. and ever. No, ever. I mean as far as appliance mediums is concerned, rather than oh, silicone. gelatin, silicone, and foam. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, silicone is my favorite. I mean, it just, you can get something that looks completely real yes. this far away. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, especially yeah. with today's HD. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you know, the film processes that are just unbelievably, you know, demanding. Uh, how do you, uh, how do you see CGI affecting makeup in the near future? We used to think that it was going to be, you know, 10, 20 years from now, but it's it's happening right now, isn't it? Yeah, and we've tried to we've tried to really embrace that as much as possible. We completely understand that when it comes to to creatures and large monsters and yes. the days of you know Jurassic Park dinosaurs, yes. that's yeah. all computer yes. anymore. Um, we may have hybrids of things. Yes. A lot of times, directors still want to have something that's practical that they can film, that they can light, that actors can interact with. Yes. Yes. So we will build something that 90% of it is, say, practical, yes. but the 10% that we could never do practically do will be CGI. CGI. And more and more, the days of doing everything CGI has sort of disappeared, because mm -hmm. people have started to realize that no matter how good you make it, unless you're making a car, you're making right. Iron Man, or you're making... Uh, Spider-Man, flying through the... Transformers, yeah. or something like that, right, where right. you have a reflective hard material. Yes. If you do something oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Those, yes. those things, yep. completely digital, absolutely. Absolutely, they look and phenomenal. they have to be. Yeah. yeah, but something that's organic yeah. it's still lacking in areas. Right. So if you can do a combination, take where we're limited practically, and add CGI to it, but start with something that's practical and build upon it, yes. you get something that just looks phenomenal. Yes. Do you think that there are a lot of makeup artists today that are relying on the CGI experts to come in and clean up their edges, the edges that they don't blend out perfectly, or and do you find that they're just allowing these edges? To, to show because they know that CGI is going to come in and clean it up for them? Uh, I, yes and no. I think uh, a lot of times uh, the days of having five hours to do a makeup or four hours to do an extensive makeup have been really cut down. Right. So time constraints have sort of forced makeup artists into um, not being as critical as yes. they used to be, which is sad. In uh, that instance. In that instance. Right. Um, I hope that people aren't just leaving edges and yeah. walking away from it. I know we try and be as meticulous as possible, and when All I'm right. there, you know, you want it to look beautiful to the naked eye. Right. And if it doesn't look beautiful to the naked eye, then the camera's going to see it, especially with high definition. I think it would be embarrassing to walk onto the set with, a, with, a, with an, appliance, an appliance that's beautifully sculpted, you know, and colored beautifully, and then you see these, this huge 
wall around the, well, the entire it's, thing. Uh, that was one of the biggest problems with silicon appliances originally, is yeah. that no one knew how to make something that you could blend the edge Fit off with. Edge, right. um, so everyone had ledges, and they relied yeah. on the translucency of the material yes. to make it disappear on camera, right. or they would completely take, you know, thick and prostate and paste the edge off, or they would cover it in yes. thick makeup or whatever they could to try yes. and blend it. Right. And uh, now we have materials and we've had enough R&D and enough time that you can do appliances and blend them just as well as you could with foam or gelatin or anything yes. else, if, if not better. I mean, it yeah. just, because it's translucent, it still does become transparent at the edge and disappear. So yes. it's a... Uh, I think it's a question of the makeup artist and the integrity of the makeup artist. I hope that people are not right. just becoming that. Well, last. I think that all artists should. Yeah, exactly. We don't. You know, they should all strive to make do as perfect a job and as quickly as possible. Of course. Knowing, however, that you know, if they're not able to, you know, within if they have to stay within a certain time restraint, then that it can be cleaned up in post. Um, so, what's happening now in the future for you? Uh, we just finished. Uh, well, we had uh, The Happening that just came out, finally on DVD, which is oh, a yeah. Night Shyamalan's project. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did an extensive amount of special effects for that. Um, Tell us about it. What, what did you do? For The Happening, we had a... Uh, it's on DVD now. See, so I haven't I seen it yet. It. I haven't I, seen it. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's, all, it's all highly realistic effects. Right. Uh, all right, don't say anything because I, I want to be surprised. Yeah, you don't I want to be surprised. Uh, we also did Watchmen was probably the, uh, Watchmen, the largest project yes. we did last year. It took about a year of my life away. Uh, from start to finish. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, honestly, it, oh boy, it, here we go. It was a great thing. For <laughs> You're too young for the for for this. <laughs> no, it was probably one of the best projects I've ever worked on, right. from start to finish. Um, okay. It it comes from a graphic novel. Alan Moore um, wrote the novel. It was a best-selling novel in uh, mid '80s. Yes. It's um, it's sort of the darkest side of what comic books can really be. These Ooh. are not uh, they're not superheroes. They're right. they're vigilantes basically right. the whole film is very dark um, the characters are very rich and highly detailed phenomenal graphic novel and uh, Zack Snyder who did 300 and Ooh, also yeah. did uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake that was recent yes. um, he was director and, and, and one of the writers on it and uh, he's just phenomenal person to work with amazing vision highly detailed and just a genuine person just right. completely wonderful nice at all times yes. never gets upset never takes it out on his employees he knows what he's doing and he knows exactly what he's doing and uh, I think it's gonna be phenomenal there's a huge amount of hype about this project um, it, if you get a chance to see a, a trailer yeah. look up Watchmen yeah, it's, definitely. it's amazing looking so. it's called the Watchmen 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 no, just Watchmen excellent who's releasing it uh, it is Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers. Yes. Excellent. So, We're definitely going to look for that. It will be very, very good. Hey, worth your you know, it's so great to see you. It's good to see you. And I want to thank you for coming to the Vincent Kehoe Memorial on Saturday. It was, it was wonderful to have you there. Of course. And uh, even more so to have you here today as my very special guest. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm so, so happy for you. Appreciate it. And I congratulate you and your entire team on really job well done all right That's and we're going to look for sure team <laughs> yes we're going to look for watchmen all right and it's from warner brothers all right justin thank, thank you, you so much, much. it's a pleasure Appreciate pleasure it. he's amazing isn't he all right don't go away because we've got more makeup and hairstyling programming right here on mua tv great it's terrific that was fun i love it